Now, the Occup's razor bound is really all you ever need, but um, <laughs> I thought we would get back to the estimation error just uh, because I told you it was important. Okay, so uh, I just want to put the figure back up here. And um, for right now, I want to assume that I've chosen Fn as the minimizer of the empirical risk. So no regularization, and my algorithm is simply to choose Fn to minimize empirical risk within the class. And so here, the outcomes razor bound can come and help us out to bound that estimation error. Now, because Fn is the minimizer of the empirical risk, that means that um, it has the lowest empirical risk, and even F star's empirical risk is higher than it. Okay, so in other words, the empirical risk of F star is bigger than the empirical risk of Fn, because it is the minimizer. So the fact that this is greater than or equal to zero, I'm going to use it in the next set of inequalities, um, and I'll call it inequality star. So that's where you'll see the, the star there. Okay, so I want, there, there's a lot of zero in disguises in this whole thing, so um, I just put a bracket around the terms that are added and subtracted, right? So it's, it's I subtracted the true risk of our star and then added it. Okay, so from here, I added something that I knew was greater than zero, namely inequality star from the previous slide. That's all I did there, nothing else. I just rearranged the terms and now you can see where they are. <laughs> and then here I rearranged the terms again and then put um, I put uh, 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 just absolute values there on them just so that, um, just so that I could uh, group them into terms each of which I can use the outcomes razor bound for. Okay, cool. So in the next part, uh, I just can do um, two times this the uniform deviation between the true risk and the empirical risk, and I can use it both for F star and Fn. Okay, so I'm using the Occam's razor bound essentially twice here, so two times, and then it's gonna be the Occam's razor bound result, which is the stuff. So it's the square root of log M plus log one over delta over two, that, that thing. Okay, so I'm just going to bring this down here, and then I'll put my Occam's razor stuff in right there. So it says with probability 1 minus delta, the true risk, the thing on the left, less than or equal to 2 times the stuff, plus um, our true of f star, which is down all, all the way um, on, sorry, it's right, right there, and it's right there. Cool. Now, I don't know if you know, but notice, but in the stuff, there's a 2 over delta, whereas in the Occam's razor bound, there was a 1 over delta. And the reason is because I actually used a two-sided version of Occam's razor because I wanted the soup of the absolute value instead of um, just the soup of the difference. Okay, so that's where that extra little 2 snuck in there. All right, cool. So going back to the figure here, we now have a bound that tells us about the true risk of Fn, which of course we can't measure, <laughs> and uh, how it relates to the true risk of F star, which is the best in class model, and then also the log M term. And if you think about it, these terms actually kind of trade off with each other. They actually contrast with each other because, you know, um, as, the, as the size of the set increases, then M increases, and then the true risk of F star decreases because F star gets closer to T. But then, um, you know, if you make if you make that uh, this the function space smaller, then um, the true risk of F star gets gets worse, but that log M term gets better. You see, so that's how it that's how it works. Okay, so so these terms kind of work against each other, which is kind of cool. All right, so when I, if I keep going, you will. Soon find out about the BC dimension and about the other cool things you can do with infinite hypothesis spaces. <laughs>